In this video trailer, we're gonna look at what happened to optionsellers.com. Stay tuned. Hey guys, well, welcome to you. All right, so have you heard of optionsellers.com? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. A few months ago, probably five or six now, by the time I'm filming this, a fund, kind of a fund, we'll go through that in a second, called optionsellers.com blew up and blew up a lot of clients with it. Now, before I continue with this, guys, I just wanna say, this is for information purposes only. I have pieced together some of the evidence I've seen online from kind of different sources, you know, I'm not seeing the kind of explanation video and I'm taking it from there and compiling it. I don't know if this is fact. I don't know for certain any of these things, but I'm just sharing it with you so you can kind of, maybe we can learn from this a little bit as well and we can kind of see what's going on behind the scenes. So like I say, just sharing information, compiling it in one area so it's easy to understand what we think has gone on and kind of put it in a trading perspective as well. So optionsellers.com, this guy pretty much did what he says. He sold options. Before we get to that, there was a distinct way in which he managed money. I believe this is what it was. Like I say, don't know for sure, but I believe this is what it was. Rather than him running a fund where you would say, I'm running a hedge fund, send me your money. You send them a million quid, they manage the fund, you buy a little piece of the fund and they manage it and then they give you a bit back when you, when you liquidate your assets. There's another way that these guys were doing it, kind of like a friends and family. Some brokers allow you to manage friends and family money so you can manage accounts. So money will be put into an account under your name and then you manage that. So sometimes, I don't know if so this is a way of doing it, but this is sometimes the way that you can give someone access to manage your positions without having access actually to the money. So you can have a deal that says, hey, I want 10% of the profits from it, and the broker will allocate those to you at the end of the month, but you can't to stop someone just grabbing all the money and running off to wherever. It's kind of puts that little bit of a, a line in. So I think this is what he was doing. He had multiple accounts, and he was managing those from maybe a master account. So uh, that's that. That's, this will make sense in a minute why that why I mentioned that. Okay, so he was, I believe, trading natural gas specifically. I think he had some other stuff on, but natural gas was the one that killed him. Um, and I'll put a chart up of that in a second. But ultimately, he was selling call options. Why? It was called optionsellers.com. He was selling call options. Of those of you who don't know what a call option is, guys, it basically gives you the right but not the obligation to buy a stock at a certain price at a certain point in time in the future. So let's say we are looking at ABC company and it's a $50 call option and the current price is $30, say. Okay, so there's a call option there. The buyer of that is basically saying, okay, well, let's say it's March as well whatever date in March is, basically saying, okay, at that expiry date, I'm buying, a, I'm buying a contract that gives me the right to buy ABC stock at a price of $50 at the point in future. And the seller of that has a price for that. It might say, okay, whatever that is, it's gonna cost you a dollar, that option, right? If the price of ABC is not 50 or above, then the call option expires worthless. And the seller of the call option makes money. The buyer of the call option loses money, but if it goes above 50, you see how much return he can make. It went to 100, say, all of a sudden that call option is worth 50 bucks. He's only paid a dollar for it in that example. So this is kind of how it's structured. And people who are selling options, generally the probability of success is quite high for them. If they're selling, you can imagine if that call option is way out, if it's currently trading at 20 bucks and you're selling a call option for 100 bucks, the chance of it going to 100 bucks are slim, in which case the call option value will be low, but the probability of hitting it will be quite low too. So you can use it, some people call it for income because they can sell call options, sell call options, and it looks like you're creating income. Of course, there's a time when potentially that price does get there, something comes out of the blue and you're hit for a stung for a large, nasty loss, but people don't think about that very often. And this guy certainly didn't because he was selling call options, like I say, I believe, on natural gas. Way out of the money call options, he was managing money four clients, I believe he had 300 odd accounts under management, about 150 million. All of a sudden, natural gas did this. Here's the chart, guys. You can see how much it spiked up. Now, this basically effectively made these call options stupidly valuable and pretty much, not being around the bush, wiped out everybody's account. 
In other words, these call options he was selling to supposedly achieve income all of a sudden became very, very valuable and he was on the short side of those in all his accounts. And of course, the brokers had to liquidate because all of a sudden the guy's on the hook for a massive amount of money that's not there. So these people lost everything. So his fund he was managing, whether it was himself and everybody else lost everything. Balances at zero, guys. Can you imagine that sticking money in and then balances are at zero, not even just a little haircut, zero. But that's not it. Because, because he was selling call options and it was each individual's account, those guys are now liable for debt that has been incurred from the unwinding of these call options. So as the price spiked up in natural gas, as we see here, the, uh, the price spiked right up, they had to liquidate, get rid of them, and it left these clients with a massive bill to pay as well. And rumors are it's around $35 million left in debt, which they're trying to recover from each individual. So I saw a, a, a story, whether or not it's true, I don't know, of supposedly a retired couple had a million dollars, put it in with this guy, they lost all of that, but not only that, they had a bill for 80K as well to say, hey, you need to pay because you're on the wrong side of this trade and it's still 80K owed to the brokerage or to the exchange. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Right, so what can we learn from it, guys? Um, the thing is, you know, if we look at the chart and you look at natural gas and we go, okay, let's look at the chart from a long period of time. It's not unusual, and before I kind of go down this alleyway, I don't want to say, no, 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 told you so, told you so. That's not what this is about, guys. I know that accidents happen in trading. I know that some events happen, but let's just look at the chart and say, well, how often does natural gas spike up? Quite a lot. It's not unusual for it to exhibit these spikes out of nowhere, weather related, whatever it may be, and cause a problem. Now, that's okay if you are sure and you can stomach that or if you get a bit of a haircut or a harder haircut let's say it, it matched the fund by 20 percent that's not the end of the world but to be so over leveraged on something like you're selling volatility and you're selling uh, a call option so you're effectively short volatility as well as being net short because you're selling the call option which gives you that exposure the spike in volatility caused the volatility to spike massively. The spike in the price obviously caused the price to go against you and decimates all the account. It just doesn't seem like the most sensible thing to do for something that's historically has shown tendencies to do that. It's not like it's come out of the blue and you've like never ever seen this in this thing forever, in which case maybe you could be like, all right, maybe you can be forgiven for it. Um, I just think, yeah, maybe there's something to be said about that. Let me thoughts on that comment section below. The other thing I want to say on this, guys, is that Again, speculation, my opinion, who knows? But I'm going to hazard a guess that the majority of these 300 accounts weren't aware that they could lose everything and go into debt. It's one thing to sell somebody based on the returns you're getting, but was that guy being upfront about the risk he was taking with the account? I don't know, maybe he was. Maybe he was very clear on it. He said, listen, this is a dangerous strategy, guys. Yes, it's good and we're generating good income, but there's a danger of decimating it and they still invested. Maybe they did, but I'm going to guess that 300 accounts probably didn't. In which case, there's a question to say that, hmm, okay, if you're trading a very dangerous strategy, should you not be obliged to disclose that? I mean, I know I would if I was trading a fund and I was like, listen guys, returns are immense, but there's a risk here. If you accept the risk, then I'll take your money. If you don't, I don't want to take it and be fully transparent with it. And I'm sure a lot of people with their retirement fund, if that was true, that story, like I say, I don't know if that $1 million story was true, then they're going, well, we can't risk a million, it's our retirement fund. Okay, I'll give you 10 grand. Then that would have made more sense to me. Like, okay, they want to have a punt with 10 grand, they're prepared to lose it. But having it all in, you know, I don't think that would have been the case, especially if you want to be on the hook. I mean, guys, people get nervous about open trading accounts because they could potentially have a, 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 a negative balance that they've got to cover. So having a massive retirement pot going in that potentially got a negative balance, it doesn't seem right. Anyway, guys, that's optionsellers.com. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. Whatever you're doing, take care and keep the risk managed. Goodbye.